Council meeting for Tuesday, November 15th. I'd like to call this meeting to order if we can all rise for Pledge of Allegiance. Doing roll call, all council members are present. Any public comment at this time? No public comment at this time. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Motion to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt the agenda by Councilman Lundeen and second by Councilman Burgley. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Approval of City Council minutes for November 9th, which was a regular meeting of City Council. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Councilman Lundin and a second by Councilman Collison. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Announcements. I Sandy Liquor Store one-year anniversary celebration will be Friday, November 18th to Sunday, November 20th. Park Recreation and Culture Board meeting will be Tuesday, November 22nd at 6 p.m. City offices will be closed Thursday, November 24th, and Friday, November 25th, in observation of Thanksgiving. City Council meeting will be Tuesday, December 6th at 7 p.m. An Economic Development Authority meeting will also be Tuesday at uh, December 6th, immediately following that City Council meeting. Illuminate Isani at Bluebird Park will be open Saturday, December 10th to Sunday, December 18th at 5 p.m. Any council committee reports? All right, we have a public hearing on the South Brookview Improvements Final Assessment Hearing, resolution adopting assessments for South Brookview Improvements Project. Step right up, Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. So this is our last step in the assessment process for our South Brookview Improvements Project. Um, slide that in here. So as you recall, we started this process last winter um, to identify this, uh, well, I guess, pavement failure in the South Brookview first through fourth editions. Um, the streets that you see on the, on the display there. Um, the pavement was completely failed. Uh, the curb was in reasonable shape. And if you recall, we went through that iteration of whether we wanted to add sidewalk or not, determined not to. Um, sewer and water was in good shape. And so we pretty much just rehabbed the pavement in the spot we failed the curb. So our timeline was we held an open house to just get public info, did some questionnaires back in February. Um, did the first public hearing to notify the residents on the project that the project had been identified uh, as a possible assessment procedure, uh, gave them some ballpark numbers as to what to expect, uh, made the feasibility report, and brought that out, made plans, got bids uh, April, constructed it. Actually, the contractor got out uh, after it right away. Um, they got it done in the first few months of the construction season, which was great. Um, had a little time to uh, wrap up some punch list things all the way up till we fixed the spots of dead sod, uh, you know, just a couple weeks ago. But now we're ready to uh, close out the project and, and levy the actual final assessment based on actual costs incurred. Um, so I guess I already summarized the, the work there, but we re reclaimed the pavement where we just blend that uh, bituminous pavement into the gravel underneath so we could save money on not having to haul it all away and bring it all new. Um, had minimal concrete curb patching that needed to happen. We did fix some ped ramps that weren't meeting ADA requirements and we replaced the street signs. And as I said, the utilities were all found to be in, in good enough shape to survive the, the life expectancy of the pavement that we just rehabbed. And so that was all left in place. So um, to compare what was originally discussed with what actually incurred in cost, the engineering report that we had done 
Uh, we had estimated the project at $596,000, which $148,000 would have been accessible. That would have had the average assessment per person at $1,800. Um, the actual incurred costs of final design, final construction, came in at $509,000, which was $87,000 less than, uh, than we had originally estimated the project to be, um, which brought the assessable amount to $127,300, which was about $20,000 less than we'd originally estimated. And that breaks out to an average assessment of $1,571, which is about $253 less per resident on average. Um, that is a 13.9% decrease than the numbers that we told everybody, and that would be kind of across the board. Um, the assessment's based on frontage, so some people had more frontage than others, but everybody's amount basically was that 13.9% less than we'd originally discussed. Uh, those cost savings were in that value engineering, like I say, and not having to haul out pavement section, um, not having to replace too much of the curb, and, uh, and we got great bids. So that special assessment To, to finish this process, we sent everybody a letter that has their specific assessment amount for their specific frontage that they had on the project. Um, so they all should have received that. I see maybe one or two residents in the audience here. Um, and that basically laid out the, how much there would be assessed, the time, the years the, to pay it out, the interest rate if they don't pay it out, uh, up front and um, and uh, the options for deferment and things. Just all kind of canned language that has to be stated through the assessment procedure to let everybody know their legal rights. Um, the rest of this slide here is comparing the last two projects. Um, this project, since we didn't have to do much curb, we had no sidewalk um, and we just reclaimed in the street, was approximately 70% less than Main Street's project last year or two years ago, and the prior project before that um, was about 50%. <clears throat> this is about 50% less than they had to pay because uh, those other projects had a lot of curb replacement, a lot of sidewalk replacement, um, and there was less accessible frontage to assign to because when there's uh, larger parcels or side lots that get divided out, they don't get to distribute the money as, as as over as much frontage of, of street, so, so the dollar per foot ends up being less. Um, so that payment procedure options are you can either pay the full amount um, in the first 30 days after this hearing to avoid uh, incurred interest costs. You can pay it annually, which is uh, dividing that number over 10 years at uh, what is the uh, the identified amount of 4.54 percent interest rate based on on the bond. So, or? Yeah, the assessment policy is one percent over the uh, market rate at the time. So the market rate was 3.54. So we so add, add the one percent for the policy, and then that's the that's the rate we go with. Yep. So that's what would get assigned to everybody um, if they're going to use this uh, payment through their property taxes over the next 10 years. Um, so that average uh, assessment of that 1500 bucks would come out to about $200 a year uh, on their taxes for the next 10 years. Um, there is a deferment possibility for people that are 65 years or older, um, retired due to disability, or are active military and have a hardship um, to, to be able to pay that. Um, that can be discussed once this is actually levied if this is passed you know tonight uh, for them to discuss with the city staff on on whether they qualify to get that deferred so I kind of rattled right through that but hopefully uh, this was the third or fourth time people have sat through my sped up presentation uh, and we've obviously <coughs> answered various questions throughout the, uh, the project time and since the letters have come out so I guess at this point Council has any questions? Otherwise, you can open it up to the public hearing. 
why do we charge an additional 1% interest above and beyond kind of what the, the rate actually is? Um, that uh, falls along the same lines as um, when we issue, when you would issue bonds. We have not doing that anymore. But when you would issue bonds is um, you would always level, levy 105% of what you need to collect because you're always allowing for some amount to go uncollected. So this ends up being it falling into that category. So you're trying to ensure that even in, even in a bad case scenario, you're still collecting the funds you would need to otherwise pay on bonds. Any other, any other questions by the council? I'll open the public hearing on this item at this time. If there's anybody that would like to speak on this matter, please step forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Luke Merrill, 223 Broadway. Um, I had someone uh, that's new in this community and she's never owned a house before. Uh, she was really confused by the letter that gets sent out. Um, so I think maybe that letter could be changed a little bit so that uh, maybe new people moving into the community or new in a house can understand what an assessment is because she was so confused what any of it meant. Um, she didn't know if she had to pay, if she didn't have to pay. Um, so I think maybe that could be looked at. Uh, I thought that was interesting that she reached out to me on that. And then also the, the math of $200 a year for the next 10 years of interest. I mean, that's on a $1,500 average assessment. Doesn't that seem a little high? So, I mean, that's more than 5% or 4%. I guess if $200 wasn't interest, that was the total amount they'd pay per year for 10 years. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, otherwise, for the new residents moving in, you know, it's hard to know when we're going to catch somebody, but everybody else has been through, you know, an open house, uh, in the improvement hearing, and now this assessment hearing. There are, like, official steps where we've, we've attempted to reach everybody over, you know, four times specifically to talk about this. And so... Anybody that moves in, you know, that missed those, would, we'd be more than happy to talk to them. Um, most of that letter does look like this giant box of endless text, but it, it really is all like legal statements that we have to make. And so, I mean, we can add possibly to it as long as we maybe have a screen that we're not adding words that are going to be mixing anything up. But we're more than happy to have people come in and ask and get clarification, especially somebody that just moved in because that exact topic, they're like, what just happened? You know, granted, once we started the process, they legally should have been told that it exists as they're buying the house. And if they had questions at that time, it would have been a great time to come in and find out what's coming as well. But we, we didn't reach out this many times prior, did we? Prior to 2019? We didn't reach, we didn't, we weren't this transparent with the projects we were doing more so than we are now. And now it's like four times we tell you, right? No, we, we, we followed the same, I mean, we had an open house. We have the improvement here. Oh, we've always had it. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's. Oh, really? The open house is the only thing that's not mandatory. And we've been doing open houses just for that one extra access of giving people the chance to understand what we're looking at doing before we even go down the road to get their comments, their, you know. On this one, we had that questionnaire on the sidewalk, and then we were able to determine to remove that before we even went down the road. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're trying to get that a word out there, give them the chances to ask what it even means, much less what's going to go down. But, you know. There's I mean, just a, a lot of people here that seem to be confused about things. So I don't know if there's a better way to, like, write stuff out in normal people language so people can understand what's going on. Or they in addition just, to the legal language, I, I don't know. It's or they could just call or come correct. to City Hall yeah. and ask that yep. question. And that's what I tell them. So. I mean, we've been more than transparent. I think, I mean, it's, if I don't know something, I just come to the source personally. I'm sure the rest of you guys would do that as well. Yep, I just wanted to bring it up. Thank you. Anybody else that'd like to speak on this matter, feel free to step forward, state your name and address for the record. No domestic violence in the audience, just one of you come up here. Come on, Ruth. <laughs> you got questions and you know it. State your name and address for the record, young lady. Speak in the microphone, dear. Hello. Bend it down to you. There you go. Okay. 
Well, we owe $2,583.55. Okay. So if we're paying, do I talk to you? Oh, your finance director would oh. be Mr. Becker. Oh, over there, you, okay. So if we pay the $200 a month to, to pay it off? No. no so, so that's why I'm confused. Yeah, it's not $200 a month. So for yours, it would be about, what are you, 25 you would be a little over 300, so maybe like 315, 320, and that's per year. That show, that's what shows, it, and, and you pay that per year, and that comes in two installments on your tax statement. That's a separate line item. You'll see City of Isani, special assessment. Okay. And, and you'll see that. And so the first half statement, you'll get half that amount. The second half statement due in, uh, in November, you'll get that second half. Okay. Yep. Okay, so then when does the interest start? Um, if you pay it in full within 30 days, there is no interest. After that, there's automatically interest no matter what. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, and if anybody ever wants to pay off a special assessment, they're not sure what the right time is or what the interest would be, come see me. We'll, we'll get you clear. Yep. Ruth, the coach has one more question. Yep, step right back up. Ask the next one. <laughs> I said the coach had more. If Or the auditor. So up up to the end of the year, you would pay here. So you you. Yep. The then city of then oh, once. City. Yep. Okay. You'd it pay here go. up to the end of the year. Once it goes onto the tax rolls, you would just pay it with your statement, right? Just okay. like normal. Now, if you get into a year two or four or whatever, and you say, you know what, I want to be done. I want to pay the whole thing off. You can come here to pay off the full amount. Otherwise, if you're just making those regular tax payments, you just send those to the county like you do have all the rest of. Can yep. you say, uh, I, I don't know, if, can I ask a question yet? Yeah. Is this public hearing still open? Well, yeah, let's, let's wait till the just, public hearing's done. Then you can ask. Yeah. Anybody else that'd like to speak on this matter, feel free to step up. State your name and address for the record. All right, none at this time. We'll close the public hearing on this item. Councilman Collison, go ahead. Yes, say a... Uh, um, her payment is $315 in the uh, uh, year, right? Yep. Okay, so if they're, you know, they went to the casino and had a great, great run and they wanted to pay a little extra that year, how would they go about doing that? I have never had anybody ask to just pay a little extra. I'm sure between Angie and I at the county, I'm sure we could figure out what is prescribed by statute on that mm -hmm. but because like, even you know, like the calculation method right so we say all right it's x amount of dollars and it's 10 years and it's you know four and a half percent statute decides how that is calculated there's the, a prescriptive method for equal installments on that um and if somebody were to pay some small amount extra i'd, I'd have to i've never just, been asked that question I, I you, usually usually you know, if somebody inquires about paying extra they're usually talking about the right. whole thing what and being I, done with it. What if I wanted to make a double payment that month, you know? Or yeah, yeah, I'd that have to, year. Or that year. I'd, I'd have to you talk know. to Angie. I'm not sure if we would recalculate the remaining balance or if you would simply get an applied credit for the next year. I, I'd, we'd have to put our heads together on that and look at statute, what that says. Kind of like I, if I you know, want to pay my truck off early so I make double payments once in a while. Yep. And it just goes into the principal yep. of the loan. Yeah, I. The ten yeah, it was, ten year loan. If you can't do, you don't have the option of doing that. That's. Well, I'm just saying. I've never. Nobody's ever asked. Really? To, I've never had anyone ask to do that before. Okay. And and I'm sure there is something in statute that says this is how you do it because that's all right. the rest is prescribed by statute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd have to look into that with the county and come to a, an agreement on that. And make sure we're both on the same page about. I would about assume you got a credit proceed. for the next year, but. I would again, assume it's got to be one of the two. It's yeah. either you're recalculating the future payments for every year or you're simply getting credit for th that next year. On the or back half or something or whatever. Yeah. 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 So. Definitely something probably to look yeah. into yeah, in case you get that question again. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I'm just thinking the way I would do it. You know, instead of that paying it for that long. Any other questions by the council? I have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. 
Motion to approve by Councilman Bergley and a second by Councilman Collison. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. K1, an ordinance amending city code chapter 325, water. Ms. Strand. Thank you, Mayor and Council. As was reviewed and recommended by Committee of the Whole at the October 18th meeting, staff has drafted the attached ordinance amendment to remove the requirement that private wells be tested on an annual basis for chloroform and nitrates. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councilman Bergley, second by Councilman Lundeen. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Anything in the consent agenda we need to discuss, gentlemen? Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Councilman Lundin and a second by Councilman Burgley. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Motion, motion to adjourn by Councilman Lundin, second by Councilman Burgley. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Therefore, we stand adjourned. <laughs>